So, what is a chromatic mediant, and what is the purpose of a chromatic mediant? So, they are four color. We can modulate to different keys, and then we can also prolong the time. Now, a prolong or a chromatic mediant. Let's just look at the word real quick. Chromatic, because that's this sounds kind of scary, right? So chromatic means what? Or what is it the opposite of? Diatonic. So it doesn't belong to the key, right? What about median? What does that mean? I heard middle or third. Okay. I like third better. So we're going to talk about the third scale degree. Okay. Now, we could also talk in this case about the submedian. What is that? What chord would that be in a scale? The sixth. Okay, so we're going to talk about the tonic and then the median above it and the submedian below it to find the chromatic medians. All right, so let's just pick a key. We'll pick C, easy enough. Okay, now what we can do to find a chromatic median is to go a minor third and a major third above and below the tonic. Okay, so let's just take C is our tonic. What is a minor third above C? E flat. Awesome. Now, what is a major third? E natural. All right. Let's find the submediant. So, you can see that all right, right? Okay. So, what is a minor third below C? A. A. Awesome. And a mi or a major third below C? A. A flat. I heard somebody say G sharp. And that is absolutely correct, okay? We can have enharmonic equivalences here, okay? So G sharp or A minor. Now, notice that these are all major, okay? For right now, we're going to just assume that we're just going to have major in a major key and all minor in a minor key. So let's find the minor now. So C, I don't know why I wrote, okay, yeah, C minor. Looked like E from afar. Okay, C minor. What would... A minor third above C B and E minor or C minor. E flat. But you see how I'm writing capital letters versus small letters? Okay. That's to signify major or minor there. Okay. Alright. What about a major third? E. But it's still minor. Now what is a minor third below C again? A minor. And then we have G sharp minor or A flat, just to be consistent. Okay, now, what we can actually now add Roman numerals to these notes, okay, or to these chords. So what would, in C major, what would E flat be? E flat major chord, right? It's not part of the key. What Roman numeral, though, could we add to that? What do you think? A major three, absolutely. But what's different about that it's major? It's major because we're talking about a major key, but really it's built on the flat three. So it's scale of degree three. It's a flat major three. Oh. All right. Now, what about E major? That's just regular major three. Okay. What is A? What is A, or major A, in the key of C major? Major six. And G sharp or A flat? Flat major six. Now this is so similar to mode mixture. So there are going to be a couple chords that we could see in just regular mode mixture. And really, we could actually see a couple of diatonic chords. I'm going to give you four minutes to now find on your own A major and A minor, the chromatic medians for all of those. And then also apply the uh, Roman numerals to those. Lauren, could you tell me <laughs> what you have for A? A major? Yes, A major. C-sharp is the major 
number six. And F is the flat number six. How many people have something like Lauren? Great. Okay. Do I have a volunteer for the minor? Go for it. Um, for C sharp, I have C sharp and C, little C sharp. How many people have something very similar to that? Awesome. Okay, I'd like you to grab out some um, staff paper. And what we're going to do, we're just going to write out our regular major key and then our minor key, and we're going to write what those chromatic median chords would be in that, all right? So let's start with, since you just did it, the A, let's do um, E A major. So I'd like you to not put a key signature because I really want you to see how these chords are going to be altered. Okay? You're going to be really identifying and seeing these strange accidentals you know, when we look at some music. So we're going to start with A, C sharp, E. And then I'm going to give you two minutes to write out, or see where we go, see how long it takes, to get through um, the major, major chords. So your first example is the Symphony by Brahms. Now, it is at the bottom of your um, first page here, as you'll see. I would like you to start right here, identify the key, and then show me where something happened. I'm only looking for key areas here. You don't have to analyze every chord. What is the key? Who can tell me? C. C. All right. Let's listen to it really quick and see where something changes. So, who can tell me what's happening in this measure right here? We're going from one to what? Do you think? Four. Okay. One to four. No big deal. All right. Then what happens here? Where are we at? Four again. All right, we start out in C, which is one, right? C. Then what chord is this? Flat six or A flat, nice job. Okay, then what do we do? Back to one. It's also a chromatic median. All right, what happens in the next measure? Flat six. I'm sorry, A flat, yeah. Just pointing to the wrong one. Okay. All right, well, actually, let's just isolate those two right there. So what are we doing? We're never leaving the key of C, right? But we are using mode mixture. We are using a chromatic median to prolong the tonic, which is the first function of a chromatic median. Okay? So we've got this really colorful back to flat six to one. Flat six to one. All right, moving right along to our last example. You're gonna identify the key, and then I have spots for you to write in the key areas of these measures here, wherever you have something under here. So one, two, three, four total spots.
we care about. <laughs> Let's see, where do we start? What was the first key area? What key are we in? Neo, can you tell us? Uh, A5. A5. All right. What happens here? Where do we go? E major, yes, absolutely. Just because there are a whole lot of accidentals, we're mostly worried about just the key areas that we're going. So here, what is the next one? E major to C major, and then what happens here? A flat again. So what we have done is go from A flat to E to C and then back to E flat. What or how many semitones or how many half steps are in between each of those? Four, yeah. Or a major third, right? Awesome. So what has that, what have we done here? Using chromatic medians, we have split the octave. So we can actually sequence with chromatic medians to then get back to our original key. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, so next time we are going to look at how we modulate two different keys, how we prolong it even more, and how we can actually write these and use voice leading to do them. But to review, tell me how you find a chromatic medium. Please tell me. How do we find one? Okay. Okay. And that can be major or minor, right? Awesome. And what three things can they do that we talked about today? What's one of them? Prolong the tonic. We can modulate to another key, absolutely. And we can split the octave to sequence back to the original key. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so last time we talked about um, kind of our first steps into set theory. And uh, just to kind of give, give that some context, when we have tonal theory, when we've learned tonal theory, which we have, right, or at least the basis of it, we are taking a collection of pitches, usually seven, because that's how many are in a scale, right, and finding out the tendencies that each of the scale degrees have to another. So we have tonic, predominant, and dominant. So they all relate to each other in a certain way because of those tendencies. Now, when we use set theory, we're essentially taking all of the notes and making them equal, all of the notes of the chromatic scale. So we're adding an integer or just a number to them and describing them as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? Now, we cannot um, say that they necessarily have tendencies anymore. So we have to find some way to make them a little bit more relevant. Now, what that means is that we can look at the order that we have in a group of pitches, or we can look at their interval relationship, which is what we're going to look at today. If you look at your handout for me, you'll see the first example of a Bartok melody. I left out the title because that can kind of um, give you the answer. So let's listen to the first couple measures. We have three numbers in our prime form in this pitch class set. Uh, However, you will need one less, one fewer um, columns, if you will, or rows, uh, to find the interval class vector, and here's why. In order to find it, we're going to start with the first number in the pitch class set and go to each note after it and find the interval from that note, um, or from that uh, pitch class. So we're going to go from 0 to 2, and what is that? It's a major second, right? So it's a two. Now, you can list these over here. That kind of confuses me, but we'll say zero to two, okay? So zero to two is a two, okay? And then zero then to six, six is a six, yep. All right, now, you can see here that we've listed that we have a major second and a tritone, okay? okay. Now, since we've already used zero, we're going to go to two and then um, continue this process to all other uh, pitch class sets 
or all other pitch classes in our pitch class set, okay? So we're going to start at 2 and then go to 6. Now, if we're at 2 and we have to go to 6, how many do we have? 4. Four which is what? What kind of interval? A four, yeah, but how many semitones? We have four semitones, which makes what? A major third, okay? Just trying to give you some context here. Two to six. Two to six, two to six. And we have a four here. Now, what we need to do is add up all of the intervals to find out the interval class vector that we have. So, interval class vectors are sometimes put in little carrots forward and back carrots, inequality. So we're going to have a number for every single pitch class. So let's add them all up. For minor seconds, we have how many? Shout them out. Zero. What about major seconds? One. Minor thirds? Zero. One. Zero. One. Okay. So that is an interval class vector. Are there any questions about that? How we found it? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do the next two examples here. All right, who can talk me through the first example, or number two, I guess, in this example? Go for it. Um, the numbers I got were zero for the C, okay. uh, four for the E, and eight for the G sharp. And um, so the distance between zero and four would be a four. We're making our table, right? Yep. Okay. We're going to have two rows. Okay, and you said four. Yep, and the distance between zero and eight, um, I'll put a four as well. You're exactly right. Why is that? Um, because we're doing the uh, mod 12 math. Or, or not mod 12, but just the other way. It's zero to eight, the other way is. Exactly. Exactly. And mod 12 Sorry. totally confuses me. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. If that works for you, absolutely. But look, if we go clockwise around here, we go 0 to 8. Well, I put this line here because it says I can't go over half, right? But I could get to 8 and then say, okay, what's left? Four semitones. One, two, three, four. Right? Or I could just go the other way. Four. You know? The other way to 8. And then I'd have that new row. Does that make sense? Okay, continue. And then um, the distance between uh, four and eight for the next row down would be four as well. Okay. So then I have uh, the carrot and then zero, 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 three, zero, zero, carrot. All right, so what interval, what is the only interval that we have? Major third. Major third. Okay. Let's move back onto the back and see something with even more pitch classes in our pitch class sets. All right, we can listen to it a little bit longer when we wrap it up, but um, how would we go about using these prime forms to find an interval class vector? Now that we have more. Somebody talk through how we'd go about it. It doesn't have to be exactly. What would we start with? We'd start with which number? Zero, right? Then we go to one, then we go to three, then four, then five, then seven, right? Then we need another column, and we go from one, three, four, five, seven. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try those on your own. All right. So who can tell me what the interval class vector is for A? Now, A being this collection of pitches here. Actually, before I ask for the specific interval class vector, why would we group these specific notes together? What do you think? Absolutely, but they're all acting as their own ideas, right? So, let's see how they relate to each other. Who can tell me their interval class vector for A? Yes, sir. Who has something different? Anybody? You have something different? 
Okay. I have three four two three two one. Three four three. Three four two three two one. But that was before I had time. How many people have this one? Do you have the same one? I have something different. You have something <laughs> different. Okay. How many people have the first one? How many people have this one? How many people have something different? Okay, let's do it really quick. <laughs> All right, talk me through it. Somebody talk me through it. Oh, one to three is two, one to four is three, one to five is four, mm -hmm. seven is six, mm -hmm. um, three to four is one, three to five is two, three to seven is four, four to five is one, four to seven is three, and five to seven is two. Add them up. Three, 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 two, one. All right, so that first one is the right answer. Yep. How many, what, for the people that got something different, what did we do um, not correctly? I was putting extra tips in the two mark, it should have been the three mark. Okay, okay, awesome. How about somebody else? I think I did something similar. <laughs> yeah, I started with just asking uh, about the integral class vector to see, uh, since we have different processes, you know, it's, it's really important when we have this many numbers that we keep them straight. What about for the next one, for B? Uh, what did we get for the interval class vector there? Yeah. The B, I got uh, 3, 2, 2, 4, 3, 1. How many people got this? Some people get something different? Awesome, that is the correct answer for the sake of time. What is C? Three 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 two, three 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 yeah. two one. How many people got something different? Because this is the right answer. <laughs> okay, now looking at this, looking at these three examples, we see that we have two interval class or uh, interval class vectors that are the same. Why is that significant? The repetition. The repetition. Yeah. What are the It could be, and we're going to talk more about that next time. The, the ones that are the same are both uh, horizontal lines more than vertical lines. Okay, so maybe we're seeing more motivic material? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they are absolutely the same. And once we learn more about tone rows and things like that, um, we'll be able to tell even more um, about the relationship between these two. But we can now see what intervals are really emphasized throughout because remember they can be uh, they can be played backwards they can be flipped they can be inverted exactly why we have zero to seven you know and we can just flip it over they can obviously be the other way but when you listen to it you can this will help uh, hopefully help you figure out some uh, aural checkpoints if you will. <laughs>